partners. So, welcome to the webinar. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Kirsty Meddings. I'm a product manager here at Crossref, and our short webinar today is about our Crossmark service. I'm going to give a little overview of what Crossmark is, but then go into the steps that you need to take as a publisher if you want to participate in Crossmark. A little bit of housekeeping, it's in the chat channel already, but we have everybody on mute just to avoid background noise for the duration of my slides, which are about 15 minutes. Um, if you do want to ask questions, which you're very, very welcome to do, please type them into the questions box, either as you think of them as we go through the slides, or towards the end, I'll make sure we leave time so that I can pick up any questions that anybody has. So Crossmark is um, a service from Crossref that consists of these things. It's a button that sits on publishers' web pages next to abstracts, and it's a pop-up box and a set of metadata that tells the reader whether there have been any updates to the piece of content that they're looking at, the publication status. But it also gives them lots of other useful information, such as funding information, links to authors' orchids, publication history, a whole set of extra metadata outside of the traditional metadata that can be displayed through the Crossmark box. Let's start with the key purpose. So the key purpose of Crossmark is to let the reader know if there have been any changes to the status of a particular publication. And we know that many things can happen to content after it's been published. Corrections, updates, retractions, even withdrawals. And these things may happen shortly after publication, but they can also happen months, even years later. So one of the main purposes of Crossmark is to make sure that there is a consistent and reliable way for readers to be notified of these important changes. This is particularly important when we're talking about PDF copies of content. We know that lots of people download and store PDFs on their local devices, and then if you go back to reference them at any time in the future, you've got no way of knowing if a correction or update has been issued to this piece of content, unless you're to go back to the page that you downloaded it for to double check, which is probably a little unlikely. But if the publisher has added a crossmark button to their PDFs, as this one has done here in the top left-hand corner, you can click on that button, and provided that you have an internet connection, it'll pop you up a web page with the crossmark box that gives you the latest status. And this is what most people see most of the time. It's got a link, a crossref DOI link that always points back to the publisher maintained copy and a link through to the publisher's policies um, such as guide, guidelines for authors and so on. So in this instance, there are no updates. But it does say that any future updates will be listed below, so hopefully directing the reader to keep checking when they see this button. And it works just the same on a web page. <clears throat> you can see on this web page on the top right hand corner, there's the crossmark button. Click on this button, and this time the crossmark box pops up looking the same, but this time there is an update. This one has a corrigendum. The box changes to yellow to alert the reader to the fact that there's something they should look at here, and it has a link through to the notice for that correction. All I need to do is click on um, that DOI link to go through to the correction notice and see what's happened to this piece of content. Another example from a web page, again the crossmark button is over here on the right next to the abstract, and this time clicking on the crossmark shows that this article has in fact been retracted, and again the box changes to red um, for the more serious types of updates, and there's a link through to the retraction notice. We have put some definitions around what we mean by a status update within Crossmark. So in order to trigger the Crossmark box to either turn yellow or red and um, alert the reader to a status update, we say that the changes to the content must be significant enough to affect the crediting or inter interpretation of the work. And within scholarly publishing, there is a fairly limited set of events that meet this criteria. So we've defined a list working with a, a group of our publisher members and these are the 12 status update types that you can use um, to trigger an alert to, to the reader. So these are, the one, these are the ones that we consider to fall under the definition of affecting the crediting or interpretation of the work. Of course, other things can happen to content. You can have minor updates, um, such as the publication of the version of record when online early has been available, or perhaps the addition of comments or replies, corrections, typos, and so on and so forth. But those aren't considered um, significant enough to trigger a an alert to the reader. You, there are places within Crossmark that you can add this information. There's a more information section that I'll show you in a moment. So let's take a look at what you need to do to get set up with Crossmark. Any member of Crossref can participate in Crossmark. The main 
rules, if you like, are that we ask that you deposit good quality and comprehensive metadata so that the cross mark box is really well populated. But you can, of course, start out with the absolute minimum and then backfill with additional metadata. You need to display the cross mark button next to the article title on your web pages and in your PDFs. And of course, quite critically, you need to commit to providing timely updates if any of your content changes. And these are the steps that you need to take to actually get set up and running. First of all, we ask you to create what we call a crossmark policy page. This is a page on your own website, and at its simplest, it can just explain that you are participating in crossmark because you are committed to maintaining <coughs> excuse me, the content that you publish. And it should also link through to your policies on corrections or attractions, um, your guidelines for authors. And if you have any um, definitions of some of the other metadata that you're displaying, you can put that on this page. This page on your website needs to be assigned a DOI so that we can link to it persistently and you deposit that page with Crossref. And the URL at the bottom here I'll be flashing up throughout the slides today, but this is where the real detail is about how you actually go about depositing that web page with Crossref to assign it its own DOI. And then you need to deposit a little bit of extra metadata on top of your regular um, DOI deposits. The absolute minimum is the DOI of the content that you're adding the cross mark button to, the DOI of your policy page, the web page that we just talked about, and if you are depositing a correction notice or a retraction notice, something that is an update to another piece of content, you need to include the DOI that it is updating. So cross mark always works backwards. You deposit original article. If at some point in the future a correction is issued, you deposit the correction with its own DOI and include the DOI of the original article and that forms the link between the two. You need to add the DOI to um, your HTML metadata and embed it in your PDFs. Many of you will probably already be doing this in um, the head of your web pages. It's a simple line of code like this that um, points out the identifier and includes the DOI. And you also need to embed it in your PDFs. Again, I'll refer you to our Getting Started web pages if you need help on how to embed metadata in PDFs. This is important in both cases because the code that sits behind the crossmark button needs to look for a DOI in order to come to the Crossref database and find the relevant um, metadata to populate in the crossmark box. So it all hinges off the DOI of the piece of content that the button is applied to. And then you need to actually place the button on your article pages. And you do that using a snippet of code that we will give you, I'll show you in a moment, that displays the button and then calls the pop-up box from Crossref. We do ask ideally that you have, for consistency from site to site, you put this as close as possible to the article title. Um, we've got a range of different sizes and shapes of the Crossmark button available. And it's also available in grayscale as well as color if you don't um, have color in your PDFs. If you're going into your back file, um, it's okay just to add the crossmark button to HTML. For current content, we ask that you do make sure it's on PDFs and HTML. But obviously, if you're going through your back file to add crossmark, we don't expect you to reprocess PDFs. But for current content, it's very important, given the example I showed earlier, that um, PDF content also gets the button as well as being online. This is the piece of code. As I said, it's very simple. You can get it from the um, from our website. You simply embed this into your web pages, and that, in combination with the DC identifier DOI, will call the crossmark box and populate it with metadata from the Crossref database. And then all of those four steps will get your crossmark um, box and button up and running and providing status information to, um, to display in that box. But then you can add all kinds of additional metadata. And it may be that some of you are already depositing some of these things. If you're depositing funding data, um, license information, or ORCIDs, all of that will be pulled from your existing deposits and displayed in the Crossmark box. And you can also add um, clinical trial numbers I'll talk about in a moment because that's a fairly new thing. But you can also add any custom metadata. Anything else that you want to display to the reader um, can be put into the Crossmark box by depositing it with us. 
So as I said, some fields will be automatically pulled. If you um, are sending ORCID IDs to us, we will automatically pull the author names out of your metadata and we'll include a link to the author's ORCID um, profile on the ORCID website. If you're sending funding information to us, again, we will look for that in your wider deposit and pull that automatically into the crossmark box to display to the reader. And the same is true of license information. And we have, as of um, as middle to late last year, a new section in uh, Crossmark, which is for displaying clinical trial numbers. And what this is, is um, looking for clinical trial numbers that are mentioned in papers. Obviously, this is fairly subject specific um, in the medical sciences. Looking for clinical trials that are mentioned and trying to match those to other papers in the Crossref database that also reference that same clinical trial, just to show you how that works. When you expand the clinical trial section, it shows you that this particular document references this one trial, at, which is registered at clinicaltrials.gov. And then expanding that further, you see that actually within the Crossref database, we found three other articles that reference the same clinical trial. These are from different publishers, so we've used the combination of the trial registry and the trial number to uniquely identify each one, and then we can go and look across the entire corpus that we have um, in our database and pull out other trials to display. So this particular crossmark box is from the BMJ Journal Heart, but you can then follow links to other articles about the same trial here on the Lancet American Heart Journal. So this is about tying as much together much information together as possible across publishers so that researchers can see as much of the reporting about a trial as possible. It's relatively new. We've got five, I think it may have a sixth publisher depositing trial data and only around seven and a half thousand DOIs that have a trial number. But even with that small set, we're seeing that things are starting to link together like this. And we think it's an incredibly useful resource um, and a huge boost for transparency in this particular area. So I realize it's not relevant to every publisher by any means, but if you do publish in this particular area and you'd like to get involved in this clinical trials um, project, then please drop me a line. My contact details will be at the end. And then for anything that doesn't fit into those sections of funding, licensing, authors, or clinical trials, there's a more information section in the Crossmark box. And that can take pretty much anything you want to put in. It's absolutely customizable um, for you as a journal or publisher to put um, things that are relevant to your readers. So in this example, we've got a publisher who's showing the publication name, the content type, some information about the peer review process it's undergone, the publication history, a link to some supplementary materials and their copyright and licensing statements. So, as I said, it's incredibly flexible, this, um, so you can adapt it to include links to or information about anything else you want. If you take a look at the um, schema for Crossmark on our support pages, you'll see the details of how you can adapt this section to include additional metadata that's relevant to you. There are some additional fees for Crossmark. There's no fee for joining, um, but per deposit for current content, there's an extra 20 cents uh, per deposit for back file content. That's anything older than two years old, two cents per deposit. And if you want to get started, um, you just need to drop us a line and say you'd like to get going with Crossmark and we'll switch that on for you. And then you can start to follow these steps that we've run through in the webinar today. If you're already um, participating in Crossmark, um, you would have been aware that we upgraded to version 2 of Crossmark um, in the summer last year. Before that, we were running version 1.5. Um, if you haven't yet upgraded to version 2, we would ask that you please do so. Obviously, if you're starting from scratch right now, you'll be starting with version 2. Um, but there are several good reasons to upgrade to version 2. Um, you get much nicer, more modern button-like buttons. Version 2.0 is mobile friendly. Version 1.5 of the Crossmark box didn't look great on mobile devices, but um, version 2 is fully responsive and can be read really nicely on, um, on tablets and phones. The code is more compatible with most people's websites. The previous code relied on some JavaScript that didn't agree with everybody. And since we've been running version 2 for about six months now, we are actually discontinuing support for 1.5 um, at the end of this month. It'll still continue to work, um, but if you run into any issues with it, our advice will be to upgrade rather than to help you troubleshoot the old version. Um, if you are already running Crossmark and need to 
need to upgrade, it's a simple two-step process, replacing the snippet of code you already have that I showed earlier with the new code, um, and then selecting what kind of button you want from our content delivery network, which is at this URL here. And we will, of course, be circulating all of these slides and a recording of the webinar afterwards, so you can share this with your colleagues um, and follow those links for more information. Just to give you some numbers where we are with Crossmark, we have there are 4.5 million DOIs, 4.5 million pieces of content out there with Crossmark buttons on them, and they come from 380 different publishers. And within those 4.5 million DOIs, we've got 44,000 status updates, so 44,000 things that are corrections or updates or retractions. 1,500 of them, in fact, are retractions, and 41,000, most commonly, as you might expect, are corrections. And two and a half million of those DOIs, um, so over half, have got some additional metadata, something in that more information box um, that displays um, extra metadata to readers. So as a fraction of the con Crossref content, it's not huge, but it's growing quite steadily, um, and to have Crossmark buttons on 380 different publisher sites we think is great and really getting some recognition amongst readers. So almost exactly on 15 minutes, that's the end of my slides today. As I say, I do refer you to our website. Um, it's got everything there from the overview of the service and a nice little um, video about what Crossmark is through to the details of the schema that you need for depositing additional Crossmark metadata. And of course, that's my contact details. So if you should run into any questions or difficulties as you set about getting set up with Crossmark, you're very welcome to contact me. I'm happy, we've got five minutes or so left, happy to take some questions if you want to either want to type them into the questions box. And if you think of anything afterwards, of course, please drop me an email. I'll just give it a minute or two for anyone who's typing. No questions from anybody? Not seeing anything pop up, but I'll give you another few seconds before we say goodbye. Okay, well I don't want to take up any more of your time than I need to, so if you think of anything afterwards, do drop me a line. Otherwise, I'll just say thank you very much for um, coming along for our session today, and I hope to see you all up and running with Crossmark soon. Thank you. <laughs>